go to Adam from Georgia. Adam, it's Adam, can you hear us okay? Yes, hello. Hi, how may we help you today, Adam? Uh, I'll just cut to the chase on the question. I, I did hire a, one of your coaches and he gave me some, I told him I would, I'd like to call in and he gave me some tips. So my question is gonna be uh, when to stop trying. Um, and the basis of that question is the length of time uh, that it's been. It's we we got divorced very quickly mm -hmm. um, last May. Mm -hmm. uh, after it was in, in January, she told me the marriage was over. I did not know. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. And and then mm -hmm. by May, uh, I had a friend who was a lawyer. And then by May, I mean it was you know, he got it expedited. And uh, and then just, just basically the, the, there were some pretty bad problems in the marriage. Uh -huh. To me, they were it was 80% 80, 80 good, 20% bad, but of course she saw it as 99.9% mm. .9 bad. But the problems were just a, a clear double standard uh, against my child from another marriage uh, versus her ch her children. I see. Uh, and I know we're not supposed to diagnose people with disorders, but the stuff she did was rose to the level of being, to me, a, a disorder, and I, and I tolerated it. But it doesn't change the fact that I... And deeply, madly in love with this woman, and, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been hell. And I've read so many books, uh, Psychopath Free, and Leave the Cheater Again Alive, and and I did practice two, three and a half month periods of no contact. Mm -hmm. But she reached out to me the whole time, I and see. she has never failed to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. So we started seeing each other in September of last year, and mm -hmm. we quote unquote dated for about four months. Mm -hmm. We saw each other uh, two, three times a week, uh, talked to maybe you know, two, three times a week. Yeah. But she would not have sex. She didn't like me kissing her. Mm -hmm. uh, and your coach has helped me to accept a, you know 100% friendship, and and I'm doing I've been doing pies since the very beginning. I just, I didn't even know what pies were. I just started yeah. self-improving because of the, the trauma. Right. And so now I'm hitting it harder, but just basically, um, it's actually coming up very soon. It's the anniversary that she told me the marriage was over. Mm -hmm. She told me she's going to start dating in February. Mm -hmm. And then she, right before Christmas, she hit me with the bombshell. I think maybe the possible man that was involved from before, there were uh, any problems that I knew of. And I see. she said that there's a guy that she has attraction to and feelings for. And when his divorce is final, she's going to be dating him. I see. And that caused me to go into another, like a third in contact. And she, every time I do that, she reaches out to me desperately. And so with your coach's help, I, I called her and like, I couldn't get off the phone with her. She, she just loves to talk to me. I see. And then we spent 10 hours together Saturday. We will spend 10 and 12 hours together on the weekends Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of my situation. Okay. If I may ask, who is the coach that you're working with? Uh, Jared, and he's awesome. Okay. Jared's a good guy. He's very, very smart guy. Mm -hmm. Good guy. We like, we, we think very highly of Jared. Okay. I'm going to ramble just for a second or two, but it's all going to be pertinent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. <clears throat> Remember that we talk about, or you may have heard us talk about at least, that people don't leave what they have unless they believe what they're going to is better. And so typically when a person's leaving right. a relationship, we say, okay, why is it that this person thinks it's better to be without you? But now let's put that back in the realm of you. Now, the fact that she's still contacting you, the fact that you spent 10 hours together on Saturday, sounds like that, uh, of course, now understand, I'm, I'm having to guess at this because I don't know your wife and I don't know you. But it sounds as if you guys still have some degree of relationship that's fulfilling her wouldn't you think so, Kimberly, fulfilling her at least in some just way? In some way. Because of the fact that she continues mm -hmm. to have contact with you. So it's fulfilling her at least in some way. Now, let's now apply this to you. Yeah, she, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say she, she tells him her best friend. Mm -hmm. We had a blow up um, early in December and I left. Mm -hmm. She was talking so hateful to me. And as I'm leaving, she's screaming at me, I want you in my life. Yeah. Um, well, and we can we can talk for hours and hours as long as that. But if I talk about anything serious, right. she gets so upset. She, right. you know, she, she doesn't want to get back together. Got you. So it kind of boils down to this, my friend. If you take that same principle that people don't leave what they have unless they believe what they go to is better, that's also applicable to you. What I mean by that is this. If the relationship that you have with her right now, where that you are at least to some degree friends, if, if that's something that you want to continue because 
if you leave that, what, what are you going to that's better? And so if you want to continue to do that, you certainly can. And so often I suggest to people, think about it this way. If it's tearing you up so much, if it's just really ripping into you, either physically, what I mean by that is that you can't eat right or, or you're beginning to have physical problems because of the stress or the worry or the anxiety, or if it's beginning to affect you intellectually, what I mean by that is where you can't really think that the, uh, like at your job and other things like that, that this is becoming encroaching into that. Or emotionally, so that you're having your own emotional problems or of feeling rejected to the point where it's just miserable for you. Or anxiety or worry, all those kinds of things. Or even spiritually, if it's beginning to affect your beliefs and values so that, that you're beginning to violate your own beliefs about what's right and wrong, your own values and what people should do then you might reach at that point. Now, and remember what we're talking about now is more of an art than a science, okay? I can't say exactly at this point, that's when this occurs. But the art here is, at some point, if you decide, no, I'm actually better off if I end this relationship altogether and move on. Physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, do I need to do that for my sake or for the sake of your child? Then, then that's the time when you say, okay, it's time to quit because what this is doing to me is affecting me so negatively that if I stay in it as it is now, it's going to affect me even more negatively, physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. Because it sounds as if she's in a kind of a form, a kind of the form of what we call the valley. He has you as a friend, but she doesn't have to come back because you continue to be her friend. And she's telling right. you she's going to date some other guy. And um, what I hear you saying is you think that he was a factor way back when, he, when she first told you this is not gonna make it. And so the decision for you, Adam, is simply this. It's simply, it's not simple. The decision for you is this. Is it having a negative effect enough on me or on my child or even on her that if I continue to be her friend while she's doing these other behaviors, it's gonna affect us negatively. At some point, that's when you decide to draw the line and you go, Okay, I can't continue in this well, as it is. Yeah, I, I, I'm, and that's what Jared's helping me with. And, and, and after seven months of no contact and, and, and thinking that I was just done, uh, I'm very, very close to my stepkids, and I'm, I'm, I'm older. So, mm -hmm. man, my, my, all of our kids are grown and, and out of the house. But the way she treated my daughter was, you know, over the past decade when she was, because my daughter just now you know, started college and moved off. But I'm highly, very close to her. She's got grandchildren that I'm very, very close to. And uh, her daughter begged me to come back into, you know, their life. They, they reached out to me. She reached out to me. She said, please come back into their life. So I've done that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, no, I, I've, I've decided to be strong because mm -hmm. I don't want to lose these people. And um, Jared's helping me to be strong. Good. And, uh, you know, I... I you know, and, and also I was, I was, an, I was an alcoholic in the marriage. Uh, and so I take responsibility for, you know, for that. And so there was things good. that I did. Good. Um, and then the other, the other, this is a, a quick question. Right within the week, few weeks I found out, I went to a pastor and he said, read James Dobson's love must be tough and write the letter and give it to her. And I did. And that made her, that didn't make her, she was already ready to leave, but she used that letter to pull the trigger. She already had an apartment picked out. But I've, I've regretted that, uh, but I think you have, I've read stuff you've said that that might not have been a bad idea, but I would like to know what you think about that. You know, I, I think that it's done. <laughs> what you did is what you did. Trying to look back at it and go, should I have, should I not have? I don't know how that benefits you in any shape, fashion, or form. The, the, so I don't have an opinion about that. She uses it, but it probably it does not necessarily mean that was the reason, as you understand. When people are looking for a reason to go, looking for a chance to go, then they can latch onto anything, and then that becomes the reason when in actuality it's not the reason. I don't know her, so I can't speak to that about her, but I, I appreciate the fact that you want to continue to be involved in her children's life and the grandchildren's life. I mean, I think that's admirable, my friend. But when it comes back to your question of, should I continue to stand for the marriage? Well, you have to make a decision. Is it, is it affecting you negatively? If so, it may be time when you stop. Can you hang on in there for a while? Then if so, maybe you continue to. But the one thing that sounds clear is that right now she kind of has what she wants. She can be friends with you and continue to do the other things. Now, if you can tolerate that for a while, we suggest that people do. 
But if it's becoming negative for you in the pies, then it's time to do something differently, my friend. But but it's always no, I, I want your decision. To continue. Yeah, I want to continue, and, and I want to try to win her back. Right. While while doing this delicate balancing act of, of right. doing my pies for me. Right. It, it, it's an enigma, but but no, I would like to work with Jared to try to win her Good. heart back. Wonderful. Uh, I just I guess that's my main question. What's the chances of that when she is so desperately wanting me to be her friend and and so forth? Well, I wish I could answer that for you, my friend. When you say what and are the you chances, can't. you know, I I don't know her. I don't know the situation altogether. And because I don't yeah. know her, I couldn't even venture a guess, even if I knew her. And Kimberly, people ask us these kind of questions all the time. Mm -hmm. And we wish we could give you definitive answers to that. We really do. But, but I don't know how to answer that question for you. It's going to have to be well, you deciding yourself. Okay? Right. Well, uh, to belabor the point, back in May, when she came back to me, she came and took, picked me up and took me out on a date that, quote, unquote, we spent seven hours together. Right. I said, Why are you doing this? And she said, she said, because I, I don't know what I want. Right. And I think that, that speak of the, that's speaking to the valley, right? Probably, yes. Mm -hmm. But you're doing all the right things, Adam. I mean, working with the coach that you have, you know, really being intentional about how you're implementing these things, making sure that you're doing it in a way that's wise, you're on the right path. And so a lot of times when people get to this point, Joe, they start asking these questions. They're trying to read right. more of the minds right. because they're thinking, if I can just know, then maybe I can do something to make it happen quicker. And if there's anything I have learned just in this season of my life, it's sometimes you just have to go the course and just wait for things to work out. And the timing is going to be the right timing if you're doing the things that you need to do. So that's what I would encourage you to well, do. Well, let me ask Adam. this: since, well, since, Adam, since, since, since we're already divorced, uh -huh. well, we, we 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 divorced in May, and since we're already divorced, I guess that greatly hinders the chances, right? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, that's really. I, I wish I'd asked that at the beginning. I didn't think really. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you have a bunch of other callers here, my friend. Hey, I, I'm admiring the strength that I'm mm -hmm. hearing in you. Absolutely. And so, um, if you want to hang in there for a while longer. You know, those things can happen, and Jared will be a good person to bounce things off of. Mm -hmm. He won't tell you what to do because he's told not to do that, but he'll help you think things through and ask you some good questions, my friend. He will. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, thank Adam.